I've got a 2009 GMC Canyon and today we're going to be replacing the fuel pump. So you can see I've already got the bed of the truck off. To do that, there's a bolt here, here, and here, and it's the same on the other side. I also had to disconnect both brake lights. Um, you'll see the fuel pump is right here. Mine is pretty rusty. Um, to, to get access to this fuel pump, this works with an extended cab or the standard cab. I'm told that the, the crew cab would actually extend a little bit over the top. And so you would actually have to drop the entire tank. Thankfully, I don't have to do that. I thought it was easier to just pop out the six bolts and the taillights. Um, but you may have to drop the tank if you have a crew cab model. And one of the first things you want to do is disconnect the battery because you don't want any kind of sparks or anything when you disconnect connections. Uh, the second thing, over here we have a little black cap right here. And this is your, your fuel line. It's a way you can test fuel pressure. Um, but what we can do is we can just take this cap off and we can just take a rag and something to poke the little pin inside of there. It's almost like a, a valve for a tire or something. We just want to re relieve the fuel pressure so we don't want it spraying everywhere. That'll make it a little easier to disconnect our, our fuel lines and everything too. So let's do that quick. The rag there to soak up the gas. I'm just going to press this into there, see if we can, there we go, just to release the fuel pressure. The next thing you want to do is you want to get this really clean and dry in here. So I just have some compressed air and a brush. Uh, soapy water would be good too because gas will be getting on here a little bit and that is a solvent. So whatever you can do to clean this up is, is great. Next thing I want to do is just disconnect the fuel level sensor and uh, power to the pump. So this just pushes down and that wiggles off. And then on this one, you need a little screwdriver or something to push down this little tab. Try to pull back on this gray. Pull that out, that unlocks it. And then bring it up a little bit. There we go, I got that guy off. Now these fuel line connections are going to be a little bit tricky. Uh, as you can see how rusty this is, I've seen other people where this actually breaks off inside the connector, causes a whole lot of issues. So I'm going to be as careful as I can. I've got some penetrating oil that I'm going to try to get in there just to try to make it as easy as I can to get it off of there. Now while that penetrating oil is in there, I'm going to try to just wiggle this just a little bit side to side here see if I can kind of work that in it does seem like it's loose now so again just keep working that in you want that oil to really free up your connector as well as you can and same on this one if I can the fact that these are spinning like this is great news I shouldn't have any problem getting them off now it's pretty chilly here it's like 45 degrees or something and cold weather and these plastic clips don't really get along. And so I'm just gonna hit them with the heat gun a little bit. You don't wanna get them blistering hot, but if you can get them up to like room temperature, like 70 or 80 or something, uh, you'll have a lot less risk of cracking them. So let's do that. Just on low temperature here. So to pull this off, I need to separate these two blue things. Um, it looks like maybe it was designed so if you squeeze on the back then it would separate both on this side. Um, but I don't really have access to get my finger in there and it's kind of kind of janky. And so I got these little fuel line disconnect tools from Harbor Freight. So these actually didn't end up working out that well. I ended up having to grind off some of the side. That didn't really work in the end anyway because even though they still fit, they didn't really fit deep enough to actually separate the plastic right. And so in the end I didn't really use them. So don't go out of your way to get a tool. So this guy isn't really doing anything, sadly. Okay, that side's over it. Smaller screwdriver, maybe. Here, 
There we go. So now I got that side over the lip. And the whole thing is coming off fine. Good deal. This next side has these little pins that I think I can just bend and maybe pull. So we're going to bend it. Twist. And see if we can... I've made room to get a screwdriver in here now. Nice. That's just popping off now too. This can just pop out of this little groove. And that's off of there now too. All right. So the part that I was concerned about is over. Now we can work on getting this ring spun that way and the whole pump should just come out of the tank. So I'm just gonna spray a little bit of oil under each one of these little nubs where it locks in. That'll help me get this thing moving as best as I can. I'm just gonna take the biggest screwdriver I have and a hammer, see if I can try just pounding into it this way. That's that. Again, I'm gonna get some more. Don't want any of that crap getting in the tank. All right, with this thing loose, I should be able to just pop this out of here. should still be an o-ring under this so i'm not too worried about stuff getting in yet so i'm still going to try to just blow it out and get it out of the way all right let's see if we can pull this thing out of here Ideally, you would do this on an empty tank. Uh, unfortunately, we can't always choose when we're going to do this job, so. Now, the videos that I saw online said that you should uh, clean out the tank if you're uh, doing this job, but I don't know what my options are with a full tank, uh, so I'm I see a little bit, a couple things down there. I'm gonna see if I can get those out. But other than that, I'm not gonna worry about it too much. If you have any kind of little bits of what looks like black in there, you can use a metallic grabber. Hopefully that will catch anything that's metallic down there, if there's any kind of pieces of rust or anything. We'll see if that's gonna pick it up or not. So I've got some Q-tips. I'm gonna to try to just clean out this little spot where the O-ring is gonna sit. I don't want this crap getting in my tank. We're running a good seal. I just want this to be nice and clean. You can see a lot of just dirt and grime that's just in there for whatever reason. Got the new fuel pump here. Uh, it's like 200 bucks. Um, this Bosch one came with the little O ring. So I'm just going to put that on now. Should sit something like that. I'm just gonna try to feed it back in the way the old one came out. Let's see what happens. Next, pop these off this push it back over it okay slide on there it clips on that pushes in there so now we can put these plugs back in slide in there 
and I think we're just about done. I'm gonna turn on the truck and see if we see any leaks. I'm just gonna touch this battery terminal with a little bit of dielectric grease while I'm in here. Now as soon as you turn the key, uh, the fuel pump will come on to prime the line. So I am going to try to move quick. It'd be helpful if you had a friend or a neighbor or something stop over. Um, so you can get an eye on it and see if there's any leaks and catch it real quick. But I heard it and it didn't sound like there were any problems. So let's move any shaky bits off the truck here and see if we can give it a start. Truck is running. I don't see any leaks at all. Looks like we are in business. So overall, the job wasn't too bad. Um, if you can take the bed off instead of dropping the tank, I feel like that's easier. Honestly, it's just six bolts and a couple tail lights, and if you get a friend or a neighbor or something to help you pick it up and take it off. I think the hardest part of this job is probably getting off these connections here. If you have a lot more rust than I did, I mean, this has, this is a 2009 with like 110,000 miles on it. If yours was a lot rustier than that, uh, and you weren't able to get those connections apart, this could turn into a much bigger job. As long as you're careful, um, get some oil on there so it can penetrate, get some heat on it so the plastic becomes a little softer. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me in the comments. Uh, other than that, I hope you found this helpful. Have a good one.